Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and I am back with another video. So the story behind this video is that I was studying respiration and then I was just like, wow, neural regulation of respiration, that is so cool. And then I was like, hmm, should I make a video question mark? And then my brain just goes, uh, yes. So I'm making a video. I really hope you like this video and before you get started, I want you guys to have a basic idea about how inspiration and expiration takes place so that you're not confused. For that, you can refer to any YouTube video or you can refer to one of my old videos on respiration. I'll just link it here. Okay, so let's get started. Now, as usual, let me give you some basic idea about what we're going to learn. As you know, respiration includes inspiration and expiration. These two processes and their rates are controlled by our brain. Now, where in our brain? So this is our brain. This is a very bad drawing, but yes. And this is our brain stem. Our brain stem has a midbrain, it has pons and it has medulla. So basically, pons and medulla together have what we call the respiratory centers. Now, what are these respiratory centers? You have two basic respiratory centers. One is dorsal group and the other is ventral group. And as the name suggests, dorsal is behind and ventral is in the front. For example, this is the medulla and the midbrain basically. So here on the dorsal side, you can find the dorsal respiratory group and on the ventral side, this is towards the front, you can find the ventral respiratory group. Now, other than these two, you also have something known as the pneumotaxic center. And this pneumotaxic center is located on the superior portion of pons. Okay, so this is where you have the pneumotaxic center and somewhere here you'll have something known as the apneustic center. So let me just label it for you. Now let's talk about the basic functions of all these centers. So dorsal respiratory group controls inspiration and ventral respiratory group mainly controls expiration but it can also control inspiration. And finally pneumotaxic center, this controls the rate and depth of inspiration. This, what I'm going to be talking about today is the neural control of respiration, but there is something even more interesting than this, which I might be covering in my next video. That is the chemical control of respiration. It's a tad bit difficult to understand, but it's really fun. So do let me know if you want a video on that. So let me start with the dorsal group. So this dorsal group is present in the medulla on the dorsal side in nucleus tractus solitarius okay don't get scared nucleus tractus solitarius is basically just a nucleus in the medulla and what i mean by nucleus is an aggregation of cell bodies nervous cell bodies is known as a nucleus and the dorsal respiratory group is seen to be present in the nucleus tractus solitarius now this dorsal group it has sensory impulses from vagus and glossopharyngeal nerve, which is basically the 10th and the 9th cranial nerves. Now, since these are sensory, they're obviously bringing sensations from some part of our body to this dorsal group. They bring sensations from the peripheral chemoreceptors, baroreceptors and several other receptors in the gastrointestinal tract etc you will learn why these chemoreceptors and baroreceptors are important basically they see the concentrations of oxygen and carbon dioxide and accordingly they control the respiration now all right it's getting sensory impulses from here it is sending in motor signals via the phrenic nerve now, the phrenic nerve is very important because this is the nerve that supplies the diaphragm. And diaphragm is the primary respiratory muscle. That is because when diaphragm contracts, 
this causes inspiration and this phenomenon is further explained in several other videos and that is why you are supposed to be clear with inspiration and expiration before you watch this video basically there are repetitive inspiratory action potential discharges from the dorsal group and the cause for these inspiratory discharges is not known and it takes place on its own so these impulses or the action potentials have a certain characteristic for example there is an inspiratory ramp signal that is the nervous signal that is transmitted to these inspiratory muscles mainly the diaphragm which i'm talking about it increases slowly for example this is the repetitive signal it increases slowly okay and this is like a ramp and this is known as inspiratory ramp signal this signal causes the diaphragm to contract and this lasts for about 2 seconds and suddenly abruptly this signal stops so when this signal suddenly stops it goes back to normal and this is a very sudden decrease so this is known as switching off of the inspiratory ramp and this switching off lasts for about 3 seconds what happens in this switching off since inspiration is been taking place here due to the contraction of the diaphragm obviously there is expiration taking place when the signal is switched off and how does expiration take place it does not require any other special muscles all it requires is for this contracting diaphragm to relax and this causes expiration and when it relaxes there is another force that acts the lung in general has an elastic recoil force that makes the lung go away from the chest wall and this again causes expiration as you know expiration needs greater pressure in the lungs than the atmospheric pressure so pressure increases as the volume is decreasing and expiration takes place now why exactly does this ramp exist this is to cause slow increase and slow inspiration instead of fast inspiratory gasps and it's pretty obvious from this that the sooner this switch off happens the faster is the rate of inspiration think about it if this switch off takes place somewhere here then obviously inspiration has taken place only for 1 second or probably 1.5 seconds and that is why the rate of inspiration and the rate of respiration increases so controlling this switch off point can help you control the rate of respiration and as we learned before what controls the rate of respiration that's right it's the pneumotaxic center and this pneumotaxic center is what we're going to learn about now so this pneumotaxic center it is located in the upper pons and it is required for maintaining or stopping inspiration and the method by which this happens is that pneumotaxic centers sends inhibitory signals to the respiratory groups that is the dorsal respiratory group and this causes the switch off of the inspiratory ramp and when inspiratory ramp switches off there is expiration and relaxation of the diaphragm so now this pneumotaxic center as i told you the first center was located in the nucleus tractus solitarius pneumotaxic center is located in nucleus para brachialis its primary effect is to limit inspiration but because of limiting of inspiration it indirectly causes increase in rate of inspiration or increase in rate of respiration so the greater the pneumotaxic center signal the faster is the rate of respiration let us talk about the ventral group now the ventral group is located in nucleus ambiguus and as usual i have messed up the spelling of ambiguus it's apparently m b g u u s and that was funny for me when i heard it for the first time anyways moving on this ventral group it 
can control both inspiration and expiration but how see the ventral group usually remains inactive when there is normal respiration because as you know dorsal group is controlling both inspiration and the inspiratory ramp signal ka switch off is controlling expiration so you won't find any need for this ventral group when respiration is normal but now when respiratory drive increases that is when there is increased need for respiration then the signals from the dorsal group they spill over in the sense this is the medulla suppose this is the dorsal group and suppose this is ventral group okay this is a cross section when there is increased respiratory drive the signals from here spill over to the ventral group and this spilling over causes activation and action potential in the neurons of the ventral group now a part of the neurons of the ventral group cause inspiration and a part of the neurons of the ventral group also cause expiration so what exactly happens is that when there is increased respiratory drive the ventral group neurons are activated and this is especially useful when you need powerful expiration and this is conducted by the mechanism of contraction of abdominal muscles so imagine this this is your diaphragm these are your abdominal muscles and here are your lungs and for expiration you want your lung volumes to decrease and pressure increasing in the lungs so that the air can be pushed out into the atmosphere now when these abdominal muscles contract and the diaphragm relaxes and moves upwards it causes a force on the thoracic area thorax is this area this is the abdomen so contraction of abdominal muscles causes expiration or powerful or forceful expiration and hence ventral group is necessary for powerful expiration it can also contribute to increased inspiration and it is active only when there is increased respiratory drive and this was it for today's video guys i telling you there is so much more interesting stuff in respiration and also let me know any more suggestions or anything you would want from me i'll try to make a video on that too thank you so much for being so patient with my almost not so frequent uploading do ping me up for anything you want thank you for watching bye